Okay, people. So now it is uh, April 12th, 2020. I'm in War Room 1. Okay? And I'm going to put it in this title again, people. I really do think Sierra was in a snuff movie. I do. I am documenting it right now by saying it. Do I have proof of it? I don't have proof of it a hundred percent, people. But I have proof that indicates that it's quite possible. Which puts me at maybe a 40 to a 60 percent with what I have just right now in terms of evidence. To make me think like that. Now I could be wrong, but in light of what the t but in light of with the type of people that I'm dealing with, and I wouldn't even consider them people. They don't deserve to have the title "people" attached to them. Okay. Um. I wouldn't put it past them, people. I wouldn't. Now, the priority is, you know, I'm debating right what I should do here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit up in this room for the next couple of days. <clears throat> if the city wants to come in and start ripping my yard apart, making threats with their $15,000 fees and all this other shit to come in and pick up toys and basically building material so that I can make the yard look even better by the end of the year. Well, there will be consequences for everybody around that. And I'll deal with that when that time comes. Okay, because it's clear to see that I'm being gang-stalked. Okay. And the city of Surrey, with their bylaw officers, is just one of those groups that participate in that gang-stalking. So next week... And I, as a matter of fact, I'm going to keep this short because I really just, I know, I think I know what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to do this now. Yesterday, you know, I tried to remain positive despite everything. And I did my little farmer meal. So I'll put that at the end of this video. Not that it means anything, but maybe for somebody out in the real world that's being forced to stay in their house terrorized basically through this social distancing and all this other crap that you know is being put upon us as a society there are people out there that are struggling to find food okay and are worried that the food is going to completely run out in the cupboards so by me doing my little farmer farmer meal just shows <coughs> it just shows that you know even a cheap meal can be good <laughs> in terms of potatoes, onion, two peppers, a can of ham, and oh, some homemade sauerkraut. Okay? That's a meal that somebody can at some point make in their own home as they're being forced to be stay in it and quite possibly starve over a period of time if this shit continues. But if you notice, as we're being forced to stay in our homes, there's an actual purge, a purge, people, going on in our community with the so-called professionals and the ones who serve and protect and the ones who provide health care they're purging us, okay? They're they're they've got the streets clean with no traffic, nobody walking around. You know, think of the movie Purge. Doesn't everybody just hide out in their houses, people? Well, that's what they've got us doing, hiding out in our houses as the ones that are roaming the streets are attacking others to purge their hatred for us. Okay. What happened to Sierra was done through hate. It was done through hate. 
It was done through malice. It was done with malicious intent. Simply because I have evidence that indicates that she was in a snuff movie. Her death just wasn't a random OD. If it was a random OD people, they would have allowed me to identify her body. If it was just a random OD, they're going to say it was a random OD because they're going to try and do what they did with Shemay. Oh, look at her medical file. It says this, 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 this. And don't forget, we got two big boxes for Sierra. We don't have a little box. We have two big boxes, if not, if not more, because of the pharmacare fraud that was going on within the healthcare system in terms of them not providing her proper health care. But of course they've got time to backtrack and clean up their records and take out what they want. You know, they can veto this, retract that, they can just rip up that, add in this. You know, so anything that I get when I get Sierra's medical files I will take with a grain of salt because it's already been rewritten. Because this is the type of things that we're dealing with. And this is why we're in a purge right now. Because they're purging the vulnerable in this society. Don't listen to your politicians. They are lying to you when they get up there and say, oh, we're looking after the most vulnerable. We care about the elderly in the old folks' home. No. If they cared about the elderly in the old folks' homes, people, what happened to Uncle John would never have happened. What happened to Auntie Joan would never have happened. Okay? What was happening to those old people at the old Yale Center when Uncle John was being held captive as they were trying to figure out how to sneak him out the door into the bowels of a ferry to rush him to the emergency Victoria General so they could ultimately steal his money shows you that the government isn't protecting the old people because all they need is that 10% purge. So I think I'm going to do it this way. Hold on a minute. Okay. Yeah. There's that Canadian funny money. That's what Canadian funny money looks like. This is what turns people into straight up fucking demons. This right here. Okay? And lust to hurt others. It's not just money. The people that do the things that are happening and been happening to my family, they lust to hurt for others. They want to hurt others. They lust. It's like an addiction, you know? <laughs> right? Anyway, that's 200 bucks. That is to file my notice of civil claim. So they can't give me the runaround when I go to the courthouse and try and file this because I'm poor people. Right? First of all, because I'm not at five pages in my notice of claim with Shemay, their system won't even be able to take it because they, they won't want to print out 150 pages they don't, they're not going to even want to print out 20 pages. Okay? So, just to make sure that it goes through, because I learned that with Uncle John, right? You have to pay. Because then they can't refuse it. Right? You fill out the one form that files it, and then you just attach your notice of claim to that one particular form, and the court registry registers it. That is what I'm going to do next week, people. And that's assuming that I can do that because the courthouse is shut down to some degree. You can do things under an emergency situation, but I don't know if what they would consider happened to Shimei to be an emergency in terms of, you know, we're coming up to that statue of limitation Although there is no real fixed date on it because, what is it, April 11th, April 15th, April 16th, April 19th, uh, is it in a uh, fucking, whenever the cop came and said, oh, no, that's it, it's a suicide, and then he left and then he came back and said, oh, no, oh, oh, no, it was an accident, 
you know, we're closing the file now because, you know, we can't pull the wool over your eyes with the suicide, but we're just going to come in with the accident, pull the wool over your eyes that way, and close the file. Is that is that is that the statue of limitation? Or is it when the coroner called me up and said, oh, oh, well, that's it. I'm now saying that it's statue of limitation in terms of, like, well... You know, it was an accident because the cops said it was an accident, even though everybody's ignoring the fact that Shemay was embalmed illegally in a hospital because I guess they figured if they didn't talk about it, the problem would just go away. And since the problem didn't go away, what did they do? They attacked another one of my children, people, and they more than likely capitalized off of it in regards to, they've got some little snuff movie going on under through that, uh, what is that called? You know, through the black, black web. Can I prove it? I'm at 40, 60% that I can. So that tells you something. And I haven't even started yet. Like I said, I live to die. This is what the province of British Columbia brought to my family. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here. I don't know how many pages I'm at. I haven't been in here for a little while. I've been kind of busy. <coughs> but I'm going to sit here between now and tomorrow. I'm going to number my pages. I'm going to add in a page for Sierra. Because it just solidifies the ongoing gang stalking of my family okay for the end goal of to pillage us in terms of our body parts our uh, energy our our love for each other our safety net just whatever it is people okay and um yeah, I think I can do that. I think I can write one page, maybe two. I'm at like 14, 15 pages. I said I was going to cap it off at 20, right? So I'm going to cap it off at 20 or less. And then I'm just going to go take a bus with a mask on next week. You're only allowed 13 people or 12 people on a big-ass bus with everybody sitting apart from each other. Do you see the purge, right, as we're being picked off one by one, okay? Sierra was picked off under a purge scenario, okay? As these professionals practice their little fucking skits before they even jump into their cars and go out into the community and try and help us. They're not trying to help us. They're swarming us. As they would under a purge scenario. With everybody locked up into their houses. Hoping it won't happen to them. Okay. And I may even write that down. In my notice of civil claim. Because this is the behavior that's happening. So. I think I'm just going to keep this video short. You don't need to see me in here typing. Right? After I write everything out and I file it, I'll probably upload it to Google Documents because we already know that the courthouse will shadow ban it. Right? Just like they shadow banned Uncle John stuff with CIBC Bank and Fraser Health Authority. They will most definitely try and shadow ban this shit. So I will definitely upload it onto Google Documents and make it public with the link so people can see it for themselves and verify that it's been filed. Okay? And then after that's been done, I'm going to see how things unfold out with Sierra, and I may very well possibly file another lawsuit just for Sierra people. Okay? Because the things that they did with their, you know, running off with the body, using the Coroner Act right, and I suppose the Tissue Act, to pillage your body, right, in the manner that they did, with no fact-check balances in there in terms of secondary autopsies, 
and all that stuff, right? That needs to be challenged. But I don't know if it's... I, I don't want to say appropriate to throw it into Shemay's stuff, right? In terms of, I think it needs to be brought to the attention under Shemay's lawsuit, what happened to Sierra. Because it just, again, confirms the gang-stalking behavior from the public union sector, right? But in terms of the actual laws and those types of things that were uh, manipulated and broken and all that crap and used to the advantage of the public union sector regarding Sierra, I, I think that deserves a little more attention. So, you know, to file another lawsuit when you live to die means nothing, people. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Okay. So I'm, I'm. That's what I'm looking at for Sierra after I file this one, to um, really kind of hunker down and get into the gists of what they did to Sierra and how they did it through legislation. I can tell you one thing. You look at that video, that shit show video, right with them going in and out of the door, uh -huh, right, with multiple people, right, that was not no investigation, people, that was a distraction, all right, there was nothing professional about what they did in terms of, it's an investigation, no, they were opportunists who capitalized off of the death of a innocent individual who had been basically tortured by those types of things for years based on a illegal and wrongful eviction that started the whole process. That was just the grand finale to their social abuse against people who they say they help. Where are we at in here? i show you this and then I'm going to upload this. With or without a lawyer. We have lame duck lawyers out here in British Columbia, Canada. Okay. Because some of these lawyers are involved, people. That's the thing. Some of these lawyers right now are looking at that snuff movie with my daughter in it. And they're sitting there jerking off. Or they're masturbating if they're females. I'm not afraid to say it. Okay, people. So you see, Mark Hayden made a fire. We're going to do a barbecue today. And, uh... We're going to cook some marshmallows, hot dogs, and, and then we're just done. And, uh, Nana, Nana <laughs> said I should, I should bring the camera out right now. Well, you asked me to bring it out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, what did I ask you to do? Say what? Uh, what my, great? uh, what great? uncle? Yeah. Yeah. What a great uncle I have, people. Yeah. He does fire pits with you and cooks hot dogs. Yeah. yeah. Only Uncle Mark Kane. Yep. Yeah. Did you find you guys' little pitchforks? No. Uh, we'll look in the daylight. They're around. We'll find them. But, but, but we're using a little knife and Mark Kane's making nice sharp sticks. Oh, well, that's the way you do it. And that's it, people. Bye. Okay, so now it's uh, April 10th, 2020, one day before she made died, two years ago. Right. So you can see that's what, the third bag of carrots, very, very nice. This is the one from 2011, right? I was mixing in here, you can see what I've done, I've combined the two. So now I'm going to take this, 
and mix it in with that. And I'm going to see if I can get it all into one big thing. See, just, do you see how I bang it? And it's dropping, right? So I should be able to get the whole thing in there. And if I don't, actually, I probably won't because I'm going to leave one out to use all the time. And then I'll put this one in my pantry. And being that I've got this out, I have garlic here that I don't want to waste, you can see. So I'm going to go through it all. A lot of it is um, garlic from the States. This one right here. This is the one I prefer to buy because they don't bleach them in the U.S. Right, you can see. This is how you can tell. This right here. Right? That tells you it wasn't bleached. When they come in, see this one's not bleached either. Right? But when they come in like that, that means they came from China and they've been bleached. So I try and buy the ones from the United States. And before these go bad on me, I'm going to dehydrate at least half of this. And this is something that I did a long, long, long time ago. Same thing garlic right so I'll just wash the container maybe I'll break those up I have garlic in here maybe I'll mix that up crush all that combine them together and then put wash the jar oh wow wash the jar right and then maybe put the new stuff in there I'm not sure what I'm going to do because you can mix things up, right? I, I kind of like the idea of cracking these up and then mixing this up with the cracked garlic. Oh, yeah. And then I had some turmeric that's been kind of sitting in my fridge for a while, right? So before it was bad, uh, it's already drying up, right? You can see this one's good, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to boil some water. And then I'm, I'm going to like wash them quickly. And then I'm going to boil some water. And I'm going to uh, blanch them. And then I'm going to just dehydrate them as is. Because I already got a container with this dehydrated. But because these have been in my fridge. So these are little things that you can do. Right? You know, you see your garlic starting to grow. Versus getting all panicky and stuff. You might want to just think about dehydrating it. Right? And then this way you're not losing on uh, any money, right? So there you go, one full Tupperware, right? This one's empty. Very nice. Okay, so I'm really tired. So I did the majority of them. I don't have much left. So you see, enough, right? Buy more the next time I go out. The majority of these are organic, right? Or they came from the States. I washed that. I'm, I just washed it, ran it under water, took scrub brush to them, take a knife, do what, you know. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them up into little pieces, okay? I'm going to dehydrate them that way. Same thing with these. I'm going to cut them up. Because if you do them at this size or even half this size, it takes a very, very, very long time to dehydrate garlic. So in this situation, I think I'm just going to make them smaller pieces. Hold on. So you can see, pretty straightforward, right? And then two trays of that garlic. So that works out pretty good. But I have to warn you, garlic kind of takes a while. Okay, people, so now it's, uh, what is it, uh, April 11, 2018, sorry, 2020. This is a second year anniversary when Auntie Shimei died on April 11, 2018. So, anyway, um, I did say that we were going to try and do a farmer's meal, so today is the day. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you these candy rinds with the lemon peels mainly, and a little bit of oranges, and oh boy, they're so good. The only thing is, they're a little more chewy than what I normally dehydrate them at. So if I wanted to, I could put them back in a dehydrator and crisp them up even more, but I notice people are eating, so I'm just 
going to leave as is and make another batch at a future date. Here's the garlic that I just did yesterday. You can see, and oh, 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 it's so good. Here's that turmeric. Didn't go to waste. This is a great way to do it. And anytime you cook with turmeric, especially with uh, real turmeric, combine it with some pepper. You need the pepper, crushed pepper, to cook with the turmeric for it to be able for the turmeric properties in order to absorb into your system. And then we're at uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, stuck at home, eating farmer's food. So there's two peppers, a couple of potatoes. I'll probably throw in one more because I informed my son I'd like to give him a try with this. An onion. There's that ham. There's that famous sauerkraut. So I'm going to fry potatoes, fry onions, fry those, add that in, and then add that in at the last minute. But I'm not going to cook it because if you cook it, then you cook out the probiotics, right? Kind of like a Mitsu. And then I'm going to have my son as a tester. Because the whole idea is to get him to start eating this on his own. And this is why we're making this one, which has been in there, what, four or five days now? So I'll leave it for a little while longer couple two three more days or whatever it is and then I'm just gonna put them into separate uh, what is it called uh, one pint size jars and give him a couple and then he can mix match with his meals as he wants because he does like fermented cucumbers and it's very similar so that's what I'm gonna do now and uh, hold on a minute okay so just moving along going real fast I'm kind of cooking these a little on high right no seasoning, nothing in them, so they cook a little bit, you kind of put your seasoning in last. Otherwise, what happens is if you put your seasoning in, the seasoning itself kind of makes the potato um, soften, right? And I'm just using good old tender flake lard, you can see that, nothing fancy. And then here, we've got just the onion and the pepper quickly uh, fried in this frying pan before I did this, right? Real fast. And, and only half cooked. Now I'm going to open this, cook up this, and then I'll be back. Okay, so just moving along. Going real fast. I'm kind of cooking these a little on high, right? No seasoning, nothing in them. So they cook a little bit. You kind of put your seasoning in last. Otherwise, what happens is if you put your seasoning in, the seasoning itself kind of makes the potato um, soften, right? And I'm just using good old tender flake lard. You can see that, nothing fancy. And then here we've got just the onion and the pepper quickly uh, fried in this frying pan before I did this, right? Real fast and, and only half cooked. Now I'm going to open this, cook up this, and then I'll be back. So as you can see, I just cut this ham up into little chunks, right? That's all I'm going to do. And I'm not going to fry it outside of just mixing it in with the uh, potatoes and that once it's done along with some of that, right? And as you can see, they're almost half done. Hold on. Okay. So anyway, I put the ham in there. I put those in there. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn it around like this. You can see I'm not even going to fry it because the potatoes are done. I'm going to turn off the heat. And as I mix it, right, I'm just going to grab maybe two or three tablespoons of the sauerkraut. And I'm going to mix it in there, so hold on. Okay, so I put in about maybe, oh, I don't know, three tablespoons of the sauerkraut. But I squeezed out the juice, right? I didn't add the juice. And then, obviously, the burner is off. So, it would be like if you were using a mitsu, right, you want to put it in at the end, right? You don't want to cook it. I mean, you can if you want to, but in this case, I just want it for flavor. And then if you find that it's not enough, and you want more, you can go off and just grab it from your jar and put it as a side dish. And then... For later. Yeah. 
So what I'll do in this case, I'll just give him a little extra on the side. Mmm, that looks so good. Mm, smells good too. Mm.